Good morning, Year 10s. How's it going, guys? Sorry I'm two minutes late. I wasn't actually, by the way. I was actually just getting my laptop all sorted for the lesson. Sorry I'm two minutes uh, late. Uh, uh. Yeah, I wasn't actually. I've been waiting. It's nice to see that six people are already here. I did create the lesson pretty much dead on, dead on the money in terms of time-wise. If you can say hi, guys, I will do the register. How is everyone this morning? It's a lovely Tuesday morning. <laughs> How did everyone get on with the homework? Did everyone manage to complete it? I hope so. I, I, think, I think I need to make an apology. I think one of the questions is wrong. I think we will find out. It's going to be really interesting to look through it uh, and do it with you. I, I've had to write every one of those questions myself, so it is very common for me to make an error because I've got to build it in reverse, essentially, which is tricky. It's never easy, and I'm going to make corrections as of this lesson. Which will be nice. Oh, everyone's here. It's so nice. Ryan, Adri, Ethan... Adri, Ryan, Ethan, who else have I got? I've also got Bo-Yang, Fatima, Amber, Kat, and Chiman. Fatima, Chiman, Kat, Amber, Amber. Have I got Natalia? Ah, oh, Zihan and Oleg are in. Amazing. Zihan, Amber's here, of course. I've tried to click that twice. Bo-Yang and Oleg, amazing. Got Natanya's here. We're only missing one person. Just one, Mary. Oh, where's Mary? Can someone send Mary the... Oh, there's Mary. Hi, Mary. Woo, we made it. Guys, that was the fastest register ever. Under two minutes. I am well impressed. Right. I hope everyone had a go at the, at the homework. Uh, let's go through it. Oh, you guys are amazing. Right, let's share screen. Let's share screen. Maybe me, me. Wanna go? And go for that one. Hide. We're gonna quickly run through your homework, folks. Here we go. Right. So I sent you, I think, five questions? Five or six, something like that. Something like that. Um, five or six water of crystallization questions. And we're just gonna run through the answers and you can tick them if you get them right. Okay. So uh, this is where I need my pen. There we go. So, 45.6 grams of hydrated, yeah, is heated until constant mass. All the water leaves, 34.8 grams. Right, process. Step number one, create your table. K2SO4, and then split it with water on the other side. There we go. I should probably make them smaller, considering I don't have a huge amount of space. Yeah, you basically take the, you just split it where the X is, guys. Just split it where the X is. Yeah, we now realize that there is 34.8 grams of this guy, because if you get rid of all the water, all the water vanishes, that's what's going to be left. So I have got 34, 34.8 grams of that guy. How much water did I have? So the water is going to be the difference between the hydro. So I've got 45.6 minus 34.8. Let's do that on my calculator. 45.6 minus 34.8 gets me 10.8 grams. So I'm actually going to rub that off now. Don't really want it. Just to clean it up. 10.8 grams. Right. Now the chemists don't work in grams, folks. We work in moles. We need to count the particles. Yeah. We need to count the particles because we know that in this formula, yeah, in this formula, there is one of these guys, yeah, one of, whoa, whoa, there is one of these guys and an unknown number of waters. So we need to get this to one mole, yeah, but we're going to count the particles. Number of moles is grams over rams. We know that water weighs 18. Oh, really struggling today. Water weighs 18. We've kind of picked that up by now. By the way, the reason why is because in H2O, hydrogen is one, but there's two of them, plus oxygen, which is 16 times one. It weighs 18. Yeah. Now, what does, what does potassium sulfate weigh? Wow, that's very different. 
So we've got potassium at 39, and there's two of them. Yeah, we're going to add that to sulfur at 32, and that's times one of them, and plus oxygen at 16 times four. I have no idea what potassium sulfate is. 39 plus 39 plus 32 plus 16 times four. 174 is my answer. Right, let's run these two calculations now to get moles. 34.8 divided by 174 gives me 0 0.2 moles. Yeah, 10.8 divided by 18 gives me 0 0.6 moles. Somebody emailed me with their answer sheet and they've got 0 0.221. They've just done that, they just typed that it was a calculator error. Very simple, I spotted that immediately. Yeah, right, now the last step, so this is mass, yeah, and then get to moles, and then divide by the smallest. Yeah, divide by smallest. So 0 0.2, which gets me to one. There's my one. Yeah, my, my one over here, there, yeah. Divide by that one, and we get three. And there's x, x equals three. Tick it if you got it, folks. Tick it if you got it. Winner. Next, question number two. I'll try and speed up a bit. I'm trying to do a little bit of explanation whilst I'm just going through the questions, that's all. Right, so split it in half. Sodium chloride, line, water. Right, we had 47.3 grams of hydrated mass remaining. So that one is 29.3 grams. The difference, 47. 47.3 minus 29.3. Oh, that's easy. No, it's not. I'm still going to do it on my calculator. Don't care. 29.3. I'm not even going to try and guess. 18. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, really? Is it 18? Wow. Okay. That makes things a little bit simpler. Divide by 18. It'll give me one. Still got the last step, though. Right. What does sodium chloride weigh? That weighs 18. Right, sodium chloride is sodium is 23 plus chlorine at 35.5, 58.5, 58 58.5. Right, 29.3 divided by 58.5 gives me 0 0.5001 technically. Divide them all by the smallest. Ah, one. Divide them all by the smallest. Two. X is two. Tick it if you got it, folks. Yeah, tick it if you've got it. Got to run the steps, folks. You've got to run the process here. Yeah, you, we get used to the process by repeating it over and over. Right. Ooh. That's weird. It's got a huge mass decrease. Massive mass decrease. <whistles> Lithium hydroxide line water right 16.5 grams of hydrated lithium oxide is heated only three grams remain wowza three grams of that wow water is 16.5 minus three wow i might have made a mistake on this one guys yeah that's 13.5 holy moly that is holy moles <laughs> uh sorry sorry yeah, I just kind of get lost in the mole jokes after a while. Yeah, I always seem to get stuck underground in them. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll stop. Uh, right, so over 18. And then what does lithium hydroxide weigh? Yeah, so that was eight. That was 13.5, that one. Oh, pen hiccuping there. It's not good. 13 point, uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. I'm just gonna restart my pen, see what difference that makes. Probably the answer is none. Anyway, next, lithium weighs, oh no, close that down. I'm just gonna close this down and then reopen it. My laptop's doing funny things as normal. Right, and then I'm gonna reopen it. I'm going to reopen it. Maybe that'll make a difference. Oh, it's already done this. I should have given it a full restart at the beginning. 
So let's try this again. Draw. Yeah. So lithium. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. Lithium is seven. Oh no, it's gonna do this to me. I'm so sorry, guys. My laptop does this every now and again, and I really can't explain it. It's just a bit of a nightmare, this. Look, it's just the pen's not working all of a sudden. It's been doing this recently. Uh don't really know what to do. Uh, I can I can do something, guys. Stay, holy moles, holy moles, exactly. Guys, stay where you are. I'm gonna restart my computer and it'll let me straight back in. It won't take very long. Give me literally 60 seconds. Rest I should be back. Woo! Look at that, the clock's still running, which is great. Okay, guys, back to share screen. It'll work now. I, I can't explain why it does this, but it does. I, I don't know why. Right, let's crack on. It might have unscrewed slightly. No, it's one of those push-in ones. It, it'll work just fine now. I, I can't explain why. It just, every now and again, it freaks out. Every now and again, it just decides to have a bit of a freak out. It'll be fine now. So lithium is seven. Yeah, times one plus oxygen at 16 times one plus hydrogen at one times one. Total on the calculator, seven plus 16 plus one, 24. So over 24. Three divided by 24 gives me 0.125 moles. Yeah, and this one is 13.5 divided by 18 gives me 0.75 moles. Right, divide them all by the smallest. Yeah, that's going to give me 1. Yeah, 0.75 divided by 0.125, and I get an exact number of 6. X equals 6. They're all working out so far. I'm pretty sure there's an error somewhere, though. It might be on this one. Right, all doing okay so far. Two and six. Next. Okay. Next one, split it in half. Calcium nitrate, split water. Right. The leftover mass after heating is 6.05 grams. The, the difference is water. So 18.9 minus 6.05. 18.9 minus 6.05 gives me a mass of water of 12.85 grams. Right, get to moles. We know that water is 18. We're getting used to using water now, seeing it so often. Now I need to calculate the relative atomic molecular mass or formula mass of calcium nitrate. Yeah, grams over rams, remember. So calcium is 40 plus nitrogen which is 14 times two that's the hard bit plus oxygen at 16 times six because it was two with the three already there it's a nightmare let's run that through my calculator 40 plus 14 plus 14 plus 16 times six gives me 164 right love that over here 164 Right, run them through. 6.05 divided by 164, and I get 0 0.0369 to 3 sig fig. There's moles. Yeah, 12.85 divided by 12 gives me 
1.07. Divide them all by the smallest. 1, 0 0.0369. 1 1.07 divided by 0 0.0369. And I'm, oh, no, I have, I've got a whole number. 29, 20, the answer is 28.99, otherwise known as x equals 29. Big x, lots of water trapped in that crystal. Lots and lots of it. But it worked out. It did work out. Big number, but it did work out. I like it. Yeah, because that was 28.99. So 29. I like it. Next, last question. Last question. 11.25. So I need to split it in half. Yeah, CUSO4 line H2O. Like mass left over of the copper sulfate after being dried. 7.19 grams. The mass of water is 11.25 minus 7.19 equals, can't do that in my head. 11.25 minus 7.19 gives me 4.06 grams. So 4.06 grams. Next step, now we've got to grams, we need to get the moles. Divided by 18 because it's number of moles is grams over rams. I haven't written that down yet and I really wish I had. Yeah, it's just nice to see what's going on. Over and then copper sulfate. What does copper sulfate weigh? Copper sulfate is copper, which is 63.5 on your table times by one, plus that to sulfur at 32 times one, plus oxygen, which is 16 times by four. So I have no idea, 159.5. Uh, 63.5 plus 32 plus 16 times four. 159.5, that's how sad I am. Yeah, I actually know some of my relative formula masses. Uh, Mr. Duncan, I, oh, I got 19.4. Oh. On, do you mean on the previous question? Uh, do you mean on number four? I, I don't know what you've done. Look at all of my, even me. Okay, have I done something wrong now? Guys, what have I done? All my steps seem pretty good. Okay, I'll I'll check it. I'll check it. Six, so we'd agree that's definitely correct. I don't like how fat that is. Oh, that's definitely correct because it was there. The mass difference, let's just quickly check the mass difference. Let's check that value. 18.9 minus 6.05 gives me 12.85 grams. Yeah, so that's definitely correct. Divide it by 18. Let's just check that that's that one. Divide that by 18 and I get naught. Oh, oh, have I made a mistake? I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake, guys. Huh, that's interesting. I just made a mistake. Calculator error, I wonder what I typed. That now is not coming up. Sorry, hang on, guys. I just think I've made a mistake. Well done, guys, for spotting it. Yeah, Gibbs, I've made a mistake. Even I made a mistake. There you go. Even I got one wrong. 0.714. There you go. There's my mistake. Is the other one correct? I feel like I want to check that one now. 6.05 divided by 164. That one is correct. That one's okay. Right. Redo my numbers. Get rid of those. I've made a mistake. Divide them all by the smallest. Fine. How did I get 1.07? What did I type in? Ooh. <laughs> it's, I'm as fallible as the next person, guys. So the last one is 0 0.714 divided by 0 0.0369. 19.3. I've made a mistake. There's my mistake. So... That there is 19.3. You can't get that, guys. What that means is they haven't, the answer will have been, by the way, the answer is not 19.3. X has to be a whole number. You can't have a partial water trapped. Yeah. The X is going to equal 19. With empirical formula, you go as close to the number, you round it up or down. Now, what this means is they would probably, I'm happy to actually leave it. 19.3 is quite a good number. And they will probably say, they will say, suggest what the value of X is. And the, the value of X is 19. 
It must be a whole number. Nota bene. Yeah. Empirical. No. Ah, water. X in water of crystallization. Water of Chris. Yeah. In water of crystallization. Yeah. Must be whole number. Must be whole number. So then what happens if it's not? Yeah. So that is true. That's an exclamation mark. Yeah. It must be a whole number. So explain, suggest it won't be explained. Do we get half then if we've got 19.3? No, it, it'll go down to the nearest whole number, Ethan. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It's the right answer. No. Okay. I see what you mean. No, Ethan, I'm happy to give you the mark. You can have the full mark for this. I'm adding in detail here, and this is now part of a lesson. So you can just add this in. You can definitely have the mark for 19.3, and you make these notes down for me. Yeah. The next, there will usually be from this, yeah, suggest, suggest problem. Okay, and I can tell you the answer. He didn't heat it enough. Yeah, did not, did not manage, did not manage to evaporate, evaporate all the water. So there was a bit of water left behind. Uh, just, to sh just to quickly show you a picture of that. If you ever heat copper sulfate, yeah, uh, Dehydrate copper sulfate. Images. Yeah, if you ever dehydrate copper sulfate, what well, I'm hoping that someone's going to give me a, a cross section picture. It's not an easy thing to cut in half once you've done it. Yeah, what happens is you dry out the outside, but the center stays white yeah it acts like a shell you kind of i'm sure you guys will understand this you know when you heat up these solids there you go if you heat up this so you can see where it's gone white the outside will dehydrate first and then there's usually a core left behind that is still got a bit of blue and it's quite hard you always you always do a very small amount i really wish someone had dropped on a cross section i do it when i do the practical when you then tip it out you tend to see it so there's the picture i want it started off hydrated. This one's, let's do a full screen snip. <coughs> it's really struggling. So with this, this is the hydrated. Yeah, they've heated it at the beginning. So this is now losing water. Yeah, this is evaporating and losing water. And then this looks like it's done. Yeah, that should be the anhydrous, no water, but anhydrous copper sulfate. But if you were to take this solid and tip it out, what you would probably see is that you'd have like the bowl shaped like this, which would be white on the outside, but it would have a core in the middle that would be probably slightly blue. Yeah, there'd be blue in the middle. White on the outside, blue in the center. You've got to really bake this stuff for like 10, 15 minutes to drive away all the water. It's a bit of a nightmare. But you can definitely have it for 19.3. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's the right answer. It's just the X would, be, would have been a whole number, the one that's closest to whatever value you got. And that does make sense. There's a bit of water left behind. Yeah. Last one. We're nearly there. So 7.19 divided by 159.5. Even I made a calculator error. 0.0451 to 3 sig fig. 0.06 divided by 18. I'm watching my calculator like a hawk now. 0.226 3 sig fig. Right, divide them all by the smallest. One, divide that by 0 0.0451, and I get an answer of five. X equals five. There we go. 
And there's your answer, guys. Five marks. Yeah, five. Uh, yeah, just five marks. Add it to your sheet. Let's quickly go and find your sheet. <coughs> we don't need that long for the empirical lesson today. I can do it in 10. Uh, Google. Okay, Google. And then uh, sheets. No, Google Drive. Why not? Recent. No, starred. So it's only out of five today. It's nice. Starred. Take me to the stars. Jules, double award. There you guys are. There we go. So it's out of five. Nice and easy today. Got a couple of people who haven't filled in. Maybe I lost it. Nice one, Ryan. That's brilliant. Uh, still got Bo Yang, Oleg, and Mary who haven't done the reacting mass one. Be nice for you to update it, guys. There we go. You can all see what's going on. We've got, let's go for... This is water of Chris. <laughs> Crystallization. And I'll wrap that text. Oh, you've done it for me. And it is out of five. That's it. Just out of five today. Isn't that nice? Uh, it's out of five. Done. Out of five, you can fill in your data, guys. I really want to straighten all these up. Oh, guys, you're doing great. Please, fives and fives and fives and fives and fives. That's amazing. Guys are on it. Just straighten up on the columns. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it because I'm picky. There we go. Some great job, guys. You've done amazing. Look at that. It's great. Really proud of you. You've done amazing. <clears throat> Doing great. Chrome takes a while to load. I know it does. I think actually, I think actually I should probably stop using Chrome, but I don't really know what else to use. Maybe Firefox, is that any better? I can't use, I can't use the, the Windows normal one because it won't let me do loads of, won't let me do loads of things. It just limits me, it won't let me do stuff. Which is really rubbish because I really wish it wouldn't. I just want to use normal. I'm happy to use normal. Safari is Safari better? I'd happy to give it a try. Happy to do it. Really am. I'm always willing to try things that'll make my laptop a bit quicker because I really feel like this thing struggles and it shouldn't do. It's an i7, but it is only a baby laptop. I mean, it's a proper surface, isn't it? So. You know, it's it's. I'm doing lots of stuff with this streaming, you know, handling stuff, images. You know, it, it does. I am pushing it quite hard. I'm using Windows. You just use the Explorer, the Edge thing. I think it won't let me do what I want it to do. I might have to go back and try it again. Right, guys. I'll leave you guys to fill in your data. Ethan, still need your data, please. Uh, Chimon, still need your data. Bo Yang, still need your data. Ryan, I need your data. And Mary, I need your data. It'd be nice to have it in by the end today. Right, guys, today's lesson. Here is today's lesson. We are doing empirical formulae. We, do you know what? We're not that, that far off the end of calculations, folks. We're not that far. <coughs> it, by the way, if anybody wants more water crystallizations, I'm happy to make another sheet. I'm always happy to make another sheet. You know, it's good for me to collect these and it's kind of, this whole lockdown thing's meant that I've actually made quite a few. So I'm quite happy with that. Most of my lessons have had a homework of some variety. So we are doing learning objectives, understand empirical formulae. Two, be able to calculate empirical formulae. B, three, be able to use empirical to find molecular formulae. I like it. 25 minutes, we'll smash this out of the park, no doubt, no doubt. Wondering what my data's in. Nearly. Ryan, data please. Mary, data please. And I'm done. Right. Okay, guys. So, empirical formulae. Okay. I'm going to go to the end of my worksheet and start the lesson here. Right. 
Title, empirical, empirical formulae, formulae. Okay, so first of all, I need to explain what this is. And it has a definition. Yeah, the simplest, simplest whole number. The simplest whole number, shouldn't do that, whole number ratio of, the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Now, I know this means absolutely nothing. Let me explain what this means. <clears throat> and you guys will all be able to do this, I promise. So, what is the definition, yeah, of molecular formulae? Molecular formulae? The actual, the actual number, the actual number of atoms of each element in a compound. Guys, just learn these, unfortunately, everyone hates them. I hate them too, it's rubbish. I now need to explain what these mean. So, let's do a little table for fun and games. I'm gonna move it to here. Okay, questions. So we've got molecular, form, molecular form, formulae, empirical formulae, and empirical form. And all I want you to take away from this is simplify. Yeah, that's it guys, simplify. This is maths, it's a maths game. Okay, you ready? Right. Uh, Molecular, C4H8, can I simplify it? On the chat, please. I'm tempted to give you the first one, but then that spoils it because then you can do all the rest. It's really easy, this game. Yeah, we're simplifying formulae. Yeah, what is the simplest whole number ratio? How far can we go? Someone on the chat spit out me the simplest version of that. Let's check my data. Just Mary left to go. Mary, if you get a chance to fill in your data, that would be great. Thanks, Oleg. Spot on. C, one, H, two. We're done. How easy is that? So it actually just becomes C, H, two. There's the empirical. How easy is this game? Thanks, Fatima. Thanks, Oleg. That's as easy as it is. Let's try the next one. Let's try, um, no, let's, let's continue this game. Let's go for um, uh, C6H14. Yeah, what about that guy? What's the simplest version of that one? What about this one? Uh, C6H1206. What's the simplest of these guys? Everyone can now have a go at this. Natanya's on it. Thank you, Natanya. Divide them all by two. Yeah, it's just a maths game, this, folks. Thank you, Adri. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you. Uh, Zihan's on the next one. Well done. CH2O. There we go. Well done. This is not a complicated game, for folks. This here is the actual number of atoms, actual number. I keep trying to shorten the word number. The actual number, and this is the simplest version. Simplest whole number version. That's it. This is not overly complicated. Let's try some more. I'm just having fun now, guys. Just I'm just playing around. 
Let's go for this. Is me trying to like pull out all kinds of cool things now, and I, uh, I can't think of any hydrogen peroxide. You need to know this one. Oh, what about water? Water. Obviously, you need to know water. Can you simplify it? And then this one you also need to know. Hydrogen peroxide. It's really important that you know this one. Hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. It's not water. Let's go for some more. I'm just I'm just playing around now, folks. Uh Let's go for, oh, hydrazine, hydrazine, that's rocket fuel, by the way. Cannot simplify, thank you, Zihan. It's the same, empirical is the same as molecular. Yeah, let's go for, um, um, Benzene, cool ones, having fun here. There we go, guys, on the chat, please. Simplify, simplify. Thanks, Kat. OH for perox, I like it, love that. Mm. Hate Joe, actually. Ho! Oh. Suddenly realized that came out wrong. Um, that, that's not what I was, Oh, I'm just going to stop talking. Oh, no. I like it. Thank you, Adri. <laughs> Thank you, Adri. Thank you. Zihan, CH, well done. So everyone kind of can see what we're doing. We can actually simplify this. Now, the question that now comes around in this lesson is, why are we doing this? Yeah? So, why bother? Now, the reason for that, so that's the question. Yeah, why bother? The answer is computers. It's actually computer analysis. Analysis. So, computer analysis, let me explain so if you have an unknown substance an unknown substance yeah and you put that unknown substance into a machine big machine too yeah this is unknown chemical and we want to figure out what it is yeah what is it We put it into a machine called a mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer. And it literally does exactly what it says on the tin. It's measuring masses. Now, what this machine spits out, this machine will, will take the unknown substance, smash it up, and weigh everybody. So it will spit out, it'll spit out carbon which is 12 and it'll spit out its it'll spit out carbon and say its percentage. Oh, this is where I'm going to make a mess. Hang on a sec folks. I can do this. Just give me a sec. Carbon, it'll spit out of this machine. Carbon 92 Point three percent. It tells you how it tells you the who's in it and what percentages it all is. It'll then also spit out. So it gives you the percentage data of each one. Hydrogen. Uh, oh no. Um, Seven point. 7%, yeah, it spits us out percentage data, and then what it also does, so this is one bit of data, spits us out percentage data, 
and it will also give us one other bit of data. I'm going to do that in a different color, and that's the total RAMs, yeah, the RMM. It tells us the total weight, and the total weight for this compound, the RMM, which was 78. That's the data that this produces. Now, what we now need to do is use this, yeah? And they will say two questions. Question number one. This is where I really wish my pen was, uh, why isn't it thicker? Come on. Question one, calculate empirical, empirical formulae. Question two, calculate molecular formulae. Okay, so let's do question number one for this one. And this is, this is just me teaching you the process, method. Step one, list, step one, List elements. Now I list them horizontally. So I've got carbon and hydrogen. Just list your list element symbols. That's actually even better. List element symbols. They told us it contained carbon and hydrogen. The reason why the machine smashes everything into atoms. So you can't use them as their diatomics or anything. You just have to list the atom symbols. Yeah, step two, step two, percentage underneath it, 92.3%, 7.7%. Step number three, change the symbol. So percent, now we need step three, which is percent to grams. And this, you're gonna laugh at this folks, it's my, one of my favorite processes this. Yeah, change it to a gram sign, 92.3 grams, 7.7 .7 grams. We can do this because it's out of 100, that's why. Right, once you got to grams, step number four is grams to moles. Divide them by their relative, and this of course is number of moles is grams over rams. How much does carbon weigh? Carbon weighs 12, hydrogen weighs one. Divide it by 12, divide it by one. Get to moles, 92.3 divided by 12 gives me 7.7, 7. it's actually 6.9, there we go, and that's 7.7, 7. divide the last step, divide by the smallest, I'll put divide by smallest, I'll actually write it, divide by Smallest. So it's one. So the empirical formulae at the end of this, here are my numbers of atoms. Final answer, C, one, H, one. There's the empirical. Don't actually need the ones, it's just CH. There we go. This is now the M form. Center mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest to find the ratio. Yeah? Okay. Second question. Yeah? So that's question number one. We've done that now. Question one, find the empirical. We've done that. Now we need to find the real. And it's told us that the real thing weighs 78. Yeah? Question two, molecular. Molecular form, real MR equals 78. Empirical, empirical MR, well that's, that's the empirical, which is 12 and one, is 13. The simplest version is 13. Well, how much did I divide it by? What we were doing over here in this table is we were dividing this. 
This one we divided by four. This one we divided by two. This one we divided by six. Yeah, this one we did nothing. Yeah, this one we divided by two. This one we divided by two. This one we divided by six. Yeah, we were dividing. So the question is, what did we divide it by? Well, if the real thing weighs 78, and the actual thing weighs, and the empirical is 13, 78 divided by 13, and I get six. I divided it by six. So just multiply it by six. Yeah, take my empirical, multiply it by six to bring it back, and I get C6H6, real thing. Mole form, molecular form. Now I know that sounds really complicated. It's not. Let's do another question, folks, before the lesson ends, shall we? Okay. Question number two. <clears throat> a compound, a compound contains, a compound contains, mm, let's have a think, Tobe. Let's go for, um, okay, got to do it in my head really quick. Come on, Tobe. Uh, uh, I need one that I can simplify. That's the problem, isn't it? Um, blimey, I've got to literally do this in my head. Um, contains nitrogen. Nitrogen, uh, nitrogen at 87.5% and hydrogen, hydrogen at 87.5%. Full stop. It's M R is 32. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay. So A, calculate, calculate empirical. Step one, list my atoms. Step two, percentages. Step three, change to mass. Step four, grams over rams. Nitrogen on the table is 14. Hydrogen on the table is one. There's a point there, by the way. Right. 87.5 divided by 14. 12.5 divided by 1 is 12.5. Right. So steps percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by smallest. Don't forget the last step. 1 and 2. Right, empirical formulae, NH2. Okay, next question, B, calculate molecular form, formulae. Right, calculate molecular formulae. Actually, actual equals 32. Empirical equals equals 16. Divide them by each other. Times it by two. Answer, N2H4. 
four, and I'm done. Guys, that's it. I hope you followed. It is just a series of steps, and I apologize for that. Yeah, and I've done it relatively quickly considering. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, go back to here. There we go. Right, guys, I will leave you be. I will put your empirical formulae homework in the classroom. I promise you it's not that hard. After five questions, you'll be like, oh, this is easy. Just run it. It's just a series of steps. That's it. We're done, guys. I'll post the homework immediately so you can crack on with it. It's been lovely to teach you guys. I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day. See you later.